All right, so we are back and it's early in the morning because my sleep schedule is completely jacked up. I'm in a different location. Yes, I'm in Wales. I'm gonna try the accent, but it's probably not gonna turn out well. And that's kind of what we're here for anyway, talking about a fight that either did or didn't turn out well in the eyes of you guys, the public. So it's like this fight we're gonna talk about, Jay Swingler and Nick LMAO. Try not to call it a robbery and arrest me, but here it goes. That's right, I'm in Wales. I'm sitting in front of my computer. I'm, um. A big fan of, of Gareth Bale, and um, I sound like my throat is very full with... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Never mind. But anyway, yes, let's talk about this fight. Jay Swingler, Nick LMAO. Was it a robbery or was this simply just a close fight that you may not agree with how it was judged? I'm going to give you guys every explanation, and then I'm going to tell you why coming out of this fight, one of the guys is going to be, in my opinion, in the future, one of the best influencer boxers we've ever seen. So like I said, everyone's had their opinion on this fight. J won, Nick won, it wasn't close, it was. Robbery, right decision. Well, now it's my turn. The breakdown, let's go. Round one, Jay Swingler comes out like a bat out of hell, throwing big time shots, and this was already starting to form, I don't wanna say the narrative, but the story of this fight. Jay started the round great, had some big time shots to open it up. Nick came back, with shots and I know people were saying, well, Jay was catching all those on the guard. He was catching some on his high guard. He was doing a good job of getting his hands up high, but not every shot was caught on the guard. And this is where I thought Nick did slightly pull away in this round. He was not only taking some of Jay's best shots, which he did early in the round, took some big ones. Right hand on the cheek, left hand to the body, another right hand, I think later in the round as well. But it was kind of the opposite where people thought Jay was catching shots on the high guard. And again, he was for some. Nick was actually using a shoulder roll. Six months into training, he was shoulder rolling Jay Swing. And they were glancing off the shoulder, whizzing by the head. He was catching with the backhand as well. There's things he was doing in this fight and in this first round that made your eyes go, oh my God, like, he shouldn't be doing that for six months in. But again, this was another close round, and this is why I say this became the story of the fight. You were judging Jay's power and his aggressiveness forward versus Nick's ability to be slick defensively and counter with volume, combinations coming back. And like I said, he did get shots through the guard here. And something that Nick Elmeo did very well in this fight that no one's really talking about is he punctuated rounds. He punctuated almost every single round with a combination. And yes, Jay's punches, they had such an effect on Nick as far as the way his body would contort when he got hit. But this is the sport of hitting and not getting hit. This is why I slightly, very slightly, go round one to Nick. Round two is, in my opinion, a round that a lot of people just gave Nick as, oh, that's Nick's round. And even on broadcast, on commentary, I think we thought, because Nick was doing so well early, that those first two rounds were just his automatically. And, and I think this is where I'm gonna push back a little bit from what I even saw on commentary, because in my mind, I thought, man, Jay's gonna have to win these last two rounds to win the fight. But in my opinion, Jay wins round two. And it's because of the things we already mentioned in round one. We're gonna go back to that well time and time again. This was again Jay's pressure. This was his power. This was the effectiveness of his shots. And what Nick didn't do as well this round was be as accurate with his punches. The volume flurries that we saw in round one that would counteract every one shot from Jay, they weren't as prevalent here in round two. And that was the difference in most of the rounds is the flurries, the combinations, the accuracy of said combinations where Jay would land one or two big shots, big powerful shots as he's walking forward. Nick also would use his shoulder roll, bounce off the shoulder, slip, catch, two or three of those and then come back and throw some volume. In round two, it wasn't necessarily as much. And I thought Jay stayed on that pressure, doubled down on it coming forward. In this round specifically, his jab was a little bit better. His forward pressure was actually effective. He was affecting the way Nick was throwing shots, meaning the volume from Nick did come down a bit. Jay did up his volume a little more here. I think we were 1-1 after two rounds. And round three was probably the most important round in the fight as to why I'm going to say what I think the fight result is. So round three comes and what Jay had done well with Nick this entire time. And again, I was so impressed with Nick watching in person that I didn't necessarily give credence to what Jay was doing on his defensive end and the offensive end as much as on second watch I do. Yes, he was standing in front of Nick. And we mentioned it on commentary that you can't just stand in front of a guy and eat shots without returning. But some of those shots he was eating were getting caught on the high guard. And again, we're talking about effective striking. Do the punches that you land have any significance? Do they have any power? Or are they landing cleanly? That's the question we have to ask. Are they landing cleanly from both guys? Jay threw a lot of big power in round one, but not a lot of it landed cleanly. Second round, more did. Third round, again, the same problem. Nick Elameo's defense stepped up once again, 
And here in this third round is where Jay started to dwindle a bit. You saw Nick land some clean right hands through the guard. I mean, through the center of that guard. And his variety and his shot selection, there were things that Nick was doing here that again, a guy six months in should not be doing. A guy six months in should not have been competitive in this fight with Jay. I can say that freely. This is a guy that's different. Nick is going to be a real problem for everyone at this weight class. He was not an easy out, he's creative. And again, he showed variety in his offense and defense and the transitions in round three made the difference where Jay was fully defense, fully offense, Nick was fluid between the two. This was Nick's best round because he took Jay's best round and still had a better one. And while, yes, in the first couple of rounds, Nick actually does outstrike Jay in round two, but it was a very, very small window and the effectiveness of said strikes was not enough for me to lean Nick in the second round. It is here in the third and the gap even widens further in the third to say, yes, Nick absolutely takes this round. And something else that I didn't mention, but was a big reoccurring theme in this fight. If you are talking about how this fight is judged in this room in Telford, I'm not going to say, oh, they just, they, they robbed it from Nick because he was in Jay's hometown. But there is something to be said for every time that Jay Swingler throws a shot. And this is something that we talked about with Tommy Fury and Jay, the crowd, his corner, everyone, yeah, yeah. regardless if it lands clean, it doesn't matter. It looks as though it does because of the way Nick's shoulders are moving and his body's flying around. A judge could say, oh man, that shot, it made him react that way. That's gotta be a big shot. Again, the crowd, everything else, just a factor to put into play. So then we come to round four. And again, this was the must win round. I thought so on the night for both guys. And looking back on it, I kind of stand by that. The problem that I think Nick ran into here was it was actually the opposite of what I thought would happen. I thought Jay was going to gas in this fourth round. And I thought that would be the round where Nick would start to take over because the volume had just added up over and over. But the opposite had happened. Jay's power, even if it hadn't landed cleanly in the first three rounds, it was having an effect on Nick in that fourth round. And while Nick was still with the volume, it was almost like there was nothing behind it. He was... That's kind of how the shots were landing. And that is where we differentiate the effective strike. What Jay was doing in the fight was throwing big time damage, but it was counteracted by Nick's volume and damage in the first three rounds. In this fourth round, the more effective, the more damaging shots, the shots that meant something in this round and had an effect on Nick and put him back on his bike were Jay's shots. And again, this is not gonna be very popular. I know that I'm gonna say this, but I thought Jay won this round. I thought Jay won the fourth round with again, the word that we talked about, the word of the day in this video, effective shots, pressure, those two things combined in this round, he landed cleaner, he landed harder, and the damage produced was enough, in my opinion, to give him this round. Because while Nick landed more here, and this is the sport of hit and do not get hit, the effectiveness in which he landed with Jay in the high guard, in my opinion, didn't have enough to clearly say, yes, that's Nick's round as well. He gets the 3-1 victory. Although if I'm gonna argue between the two, I would lean toward a Nick win versus a Jay win. But the reality is, guys, in my opinion, we have a draw on our hand. I think Nick wins round one and three. I think Jay wins round two and four. And that's where I left it. And since I've now been recording this video, the PBA has come out and said they are standing by Jay's 3-1 win. Some of the reasoning I'm not necessarily a big fan of. Sure, I would have been more happy with the PBA if they had given Faye Sensei his win versus King Kenny. And, and that decision kind of contradicts what they said and the way they scored the fight for Jay here. But regardless, to me, none of it really matters because what I saw was a draw. And the only thing that matters, in my opinion, is that both guys want to do this again and I think should do this again. I also saw the, the, the stats and the, the charts that Keemstar put out and I think it's super interesting watching an AI score this fight. And again, the 10 point system is highly variable even when we use an AI counter to talk about power punches and effective striking because even then those words can be subjective. What were Jay's power punches looking like to Nick's power punches? Who had more power in those punches? Whose punches were more effective? Because you can say the word power, you can say the word effective, but those meanings can be relative to the fighter using them. I want to make sure that we also dedicate time to thank Jay and Nick for putting on a great performance. I think both guys have a really, really bright future in this scene. I think Jay is more prepared for whatever his next step is than you guys may think. Yes, this wasn't his best fight. It was a bit flat-footed. There's some things he can do with his defense to look a little better, have more variety in his offense, all that stuff. But I wanna talk about the future of influencer boxing, and that is Nick Elameo. I challenge you guys to look at anybody six months into their influencer boxing career, even just a regular boxing journey. Not many people are doing what this kid did on Saturday night. Not many people are shoulder rolling, parrying with the backhand, being able to get the head off center line with the jab, being able to again, jut the chin forward, pull shots out, uppercuts underneath, left check hooks. The kid 
has it. He is very, very special. You know, we talk about you can't teach power, you can't teach speed. You can teach ring IQ and, and feel for boxing, but when it comes naturally and you teach on top of it, this kid is going to be a problem. And as far as both guys going forward, listen, it's the rematch next. That's what I want to see. I think that is the fight to make. But both guys now have options. Like before this, you were thinking, okay, Jay versus Deji or Jay versus Gibb, as he said. But I would even argue that Nick can take some of those fights. He's a little smaller, and that was another thing that is a big deal. Nick is a little smaller than Jay is, and I think he was 159 pounds in the night. But all the fights that you can see Jay in next, you can also see Nick in. But that's how I had it. Like I said, it was a draw in my opinion. I know that's not the most dramatic or controversial thing to say, but I truly look at it that way. And I know people are gonna give me stick for it. But you guys let me know on Twitter, in the comments, was it a robbery? Did you guys think that this was blatantly Nick LMAO's fight and Jay had no argument for winning or we need to see it again? That's my opinion, but I don't have those answers. So sometime in the near future, maybe another Misfits card in London coming up. These two need to run it back. And who wins that one? Well, I guess we'll find out.